Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be speaking about cozy, spooky books to be reading during this spooky season. I know for a lot of you you're going into autumn at the moment and it's a very cozy time of year. Um, for me, I live in Australia, it is already disgustingly warm outside and I'm very very jealous of everyone who's like sharing autumn pics on Instagram um, because autumn is my favourite season and I love this sort of time of year. Except that I'll just be living like vicariously through everyone who's living in the Northern Hemisphere um, who's getting to be in the cozy nice autumnal season at the moment. Regardless, I have a bunch of wonderful Halloween-y books to recommend to you guys. A lot of these books are gothic and a little bit creepy. There's nothing particularly horror-y here because I'm not a massive horror reader. But yeah, without further ado, let's jump into the video and I'm going to be sharing with you guys my top books to read for the spooky cozy season. Okay, so the first two are the ones that I haven't actually finished reading yet, but I am really excited to read and I will be reading through this spooky season. Um, the first one is A Deadly Education by Naomi Novik. I have only just started this. I'm like halfway through. And the next one is The Deathless Girls by Kieran Millwood Hargrave. Um, I haven't started this one yet. So these two books I picked up recently. Um, I so far am loving A Deadly Education. This has been marketed as like the book for people who grew up with Harry Potter who wanted something a bit darker. Effectively there's uh, the main character, whose name is Galadriel. For anyone who's a fan of Lord of the Rings, I feel like that name is going to very much speak to them. And she is attending this very dark, uh, scary school, uh, which has a lot of monsters, and it's like a wizarding school. And unlike in Harry Potter, the price of actually using magic in this book is a lot higher. Children die in this school. It's, yeah, it's very dark, it's very cool, and I'm really enjoying it so far. And then, yeah, The Deathless Girls. This one um, has the most beautiful cover of a book I've probably ever seen. I'm in love with this cover. It's so pretty. It's like textured. I don't know what this is actually called. Is it bevel? I don't know. But it's got like the shiny goldy bits on it and I think it's very pretty. And this one is sort of a take on like the Brides of Dracula. On the eve of their divining day, 17 year old Lil and her twin sister Kizzy are captured by the cruel boy of Valkar. Forced to work as slaves, they are stripped of hope, power, and everything they've ever known until Mira, a fellow captive, gives Lil something to live for and someone to love. But when the sisters hear of the mythical dragon, more monster than man who accepts girls as gifts, their desperate existence is threatened once more. In this brutal world of dark desire and destiny, the girls must fight to save their own flesh and blood, even if that means accepting a fate beyond death. But yeah, look, the cover was what sold this one for me. Um, there, there is nothing more quintessentially spooky and gothic than something like this. Sounds very cool. I'm so excited to read it. I'll let you guys know what I think of it. Those are the two books I myself am going to be reading this spooky season. Um, again, haven't finished these. I'm hoping they're really good. Moving on, these are now going to be some of my favourite gothic spooky books that I really, really love to read and really love to go back to. So kicking it off with the, like, quintessential spooky author Edgar Allan Poe. Um, Edgar Allan Poe is a brilliant author in like many many different ways but also because you can find a lot of his works online for free. He has a lot of very spooky creepy short stories. I know the first time I heard of him was in the Telltale Heart episode of The Simpsons and then also the one with the raven in it. Those are actually two of my favourite like poems slash short stories by him. I think they're both brilliant. Also I really like The Fall of the House of Usher. That is an incredibly spooky creepy short story. Um, that sort of left me feeling really unsettled and like uncomfortable when I was reading it. So yeah, Edgar Allan Poe, definitely, definitely something that you need to be reading around the spooky season. And particularly if you can pick up like a beautiful copy of his works like this. I got this for a present and I love it very much. Next we actually have three books by Neil Gaiman. For those of you who watch a lot of my videos, you're probably sick of me talking about Neil Gaiman, but I think this is a great time of year to be reading his books. So the first one I'm going to recommend is actually Coraline. This is a middle grade story about a young girl who is on her school holidays. She's in this big creepy old house. A portal sort of opens up in the house and she's sucked into this world with this creepy other mother who's like very demonic and scary and has buttons for eyes. It's a beautiful short read and I love it very, very much. I've spoken about it bunches and bunches on this channel. So I'm not gonna go super in depth into Caroline, but another two books I love by Neil Gaiman are these two. Um, the Graveyard Book, as well as The Ocean at the End of the Lane. The Graveyard Book, I was actually fortunate enough to get uh, signed when I met him at the start of the year at a 
uh, lecture he gave. Um, he drew a little graveyard, which is really, really cute. But yeah, this is another middle grade story. It is a coming of age story centering around a young boy whose name is Bod, which is short for nobody. His name sort of comes from this sweet, creepy little nursery rhyme that's at the beginning of the story. Pretty much what happens is he's a young baby in his home. His parents are murdered. Um, the first line of this book just, it starts off really delightfully creepy. There was a hand in the darkness and it held a knife and it immediately jumps into um, you know, the worst thing in the world happening and then tiny little bod tottering off up the street. He finds refuge in this graveyard um, and he gets away from the man who's trying to kill him, who's just killed the rest of his family. Um, he's taken in by the ghosts and then he is subsequently raised by ghosts. And yeah, it's this really lovely coming of age story that I love so incredibly much. It's kind of episodic with the way the chapters work, but yeah, it's such a beautiful story and I cannot recommend it enough. And then the last new game and book is The Ocean at the End of the Lane. This one, unlike the other two, is actually written for adults. However, it's told from the perspective of a seven-year-old boy. Pretty much what happens is this uh, middle-aged man has like gone back to his family home to attend a funeral and he slowly starts remembering these like creepy weird things that happened to him when he was a child. When he was about seven years old, a um, they had a, I think it was like a backpacker staying with his family um, who actually commits suicide in like their like family car. And like the, the police find the car and it, this is all like very confusing to him. That was actually something that happened to Neil Gaiman himself when he was a child and he only found out about like later on. Um, but this, that, that was what actually happened to his family car that disappeared and he couldn't remember why and he later found out that something horrible had happened inside of it. But yeah, the same thing happens to this boy and it starts off these very like weird occurrences in his life. Yeah, a lot, a lot darker than the other two, very much more focused on an adult target audience, but um, also a beautiful, brilliant read and very, very short too. The next two books are also by the same author and that author is Angela Carter. Now, it wouldn't be a spooky books recommendation video without me mentioning Angela Carter. She's one of my favorite authors of all time. I love her to death. She is so incredibly brilliant. And the two books I'm recommending today are The Magic Toy Shop and The Bloody Chamber. Now, The Bloody Chamber is a collection of fairy tales written by Carter. Doesn't sound very spooky, but like, she makes them very, very spooky. Uh, the first fairy tale in this is Bluebeard, and I didn't know the story of Bluebeard before having read this and I found it quite quite scary and quite terrifying and unsettling. These aren't really like retellings of fairy tales but they're more like original stories that have been very very heavily inspired by particular fairy tales. They're very creepy and spooky and really decadently written. I love Angela Carter's writing style, it's so pretty and it paints such a strong vibrant picture like every Every tiny bit of imagery in her stories is amazing and I love it. Um, but yes, very, very creepy and spooky. This one also has a lovely cover, which I really like. <laughs> and then The Magic Toy Shop, which is a gothic Bildungsroman, which is a coming of age story um, about a young girl named Melanie whose parents die in a plane accident and she has to go down to London to live with her Uncle Philip, who runs a creepy, scary toy shop. There's less magic in this than you would think from the title. Do not go in expecting a fantasy story, just in case I'm like leading you down the wrong path. Um, this isn't a fantasy story, but it is a creepy gothic story. It's one of my favorite books of all time. I think it's brilliant. Set in 1960s London, it's very cool, it's very creepy, and it's just a brilliant, brilliant story and perfect to read at this time of year. And then the last two books on this reading recommendations list are super duper classic books. Uh, the first one is Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. And quite honestly, I've spoken about this story to death on this channel, so I'm not gonna labor on about it for too long, but it's one of my favorite stories of all time. And it is about a scientist who animates life from nothing, basically is a grave robber and puts together this creature, realizes too late that what he's created is actually a terrible, terrible monster, he's played God, he's done all these awful things, then it it sort of follows on from there. Let's just say that it's a bit of a challenge from him from there on out. As always, I'll bring up the fact that Frankenstein is the name of the doctor, not the monster. The monster doesn't have a name. He's called Demon, Fiend, or Wretch, and stuff like this, but he doesn't actually have a name. Yeah, I love this story. I think what's the most interesting about this story is that it's an epistolar, epistolar, every time, every time I try to say that, I mess it up. 
epistolary novel, which is a novel written in letters. It's also a novel with many narrative frames, so it's a story within a story within a story. The next one on my list that I want to recommend to you is A Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. This is another one that I've spoken about to death on this channel. Um, I think I spoke about it really recently in one of my wrap-up videos actually. Um, but in case you missed it, that book is about a young man who is like very, very beautiful. He is getting this portrait painted of him and he becomes very jealous of this painting. He wishes that forever and ever that painting could be the thing that ages and he could remain beautiful. However, his wish sort of like comes true and as Dorian Gray sort of like commits these horrible things, the painting warps and changes and his face becomes more haggard in the painting. It's a really creepy, beautiful story and it's one of my favourites of all time. I reread it all the time, which is why I've, I've spoken about it so much on this channel already. But that is an excellent, creepy, spooky, gothic story. And then the final story on this list is Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. Um, this is another one of the like really, really well-known classic gothic works, along with Frankenstein and Dorian Gray. This one is about a young governess. She's had a really sort of difficult go in life. Um, she didn't really have a secure family situation. And then she becomes the governess to a young girl in this very creepy mansion where the head of the mansion is a man named Mr. Rochester, who's very mysterious and he's not there very often. There's a few things that go bump in the night in this house. It's very creepy. Um, I found it very humorous when I read it the first time and it's also really really beautifully written like i really love this story and yeah those were all of the books i wanted to recommend to you guys that fall into this category of spooky or cozy or like really perfect to read around like halloween gothic is one of my favorite genres i really love gothic books and i reread like these gothic books particularly the gothic classics a lot which is why some of you guys may have heard me speak about them quite a bit before as well but for those of you who are out here looking for spooky gothic books these are my favorites as well as some books i'm very excited about and going to be reading soon myself if you guys are reading any spooky gothic uh cozy books at the moment that you're really loving um please pop them in the comments down below i'm always looking for books to put on my tbr um, and they might also help someone else as well uh, take care guys, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time, bye bye.